What's up, guys? Welcome back to another film session breakdown presented to you by the Birdsaw Law Firm, the official injury lawyers of Pro Pels Talk. The Pelicans are advancing to the NBA playoffs with a victory over the Sacramento Kings last night. They will now get the one-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. Looking back at it, Thunder won the series 2-1, to one, um, and there was one game where the Pelicans played without Zion Williamson, and they lost by about 20-something points. So I went back, looked at the game today, uh, and it was a lot closer than that final score. I Look, I... The Thunder are a really good team. I'm not saying, you know, they, they they beat them. But, I mean, I think the Pelicans went like 9 of 36 from three-point land. They had 20 turnovers. Brandon Ingram had like nine shots. Uh, C.J. McCollum wasn't great. Uh, Trey Murphy still wasn't very right. So, you know, Jordan Hawkins is playing here. So, there are a lot of different, like, Trey Murphy's now peaking at the right time. Like, Trey Murphy's a huge player coming into the series. He didn't have that great of a game. So, first and foremost, what we're going to talk about was something that stood out to me was when Jonas Valanciunas had the basketball against Chet Holmgren. I think this is the biggest matchup of the series because Chet has killed the Pelicans on offense. Defensively, though, you have an advantage here with JV. And early on, uh, you'll see, we'll roll the clip here. The first is a is a double uh, post entry from CJ McCollum. So we're looking here. We got enough. It looks like the Thunder are going to want to send two. So instead, they back up. They don't have anything. That's okay. There's still 12 seconds left in the shot clock. CJ McCollum comes back and immediately gives it back in the post. So JV repost Chet, two hard dribbles and a layup. And you're going to see this. He's done this a couple of times against Chet here, but also guys, what I want you to see is look at all the eyes on Jonas Valanciunas, all 10 eyes, literally all 10 are on JV. Even if he doesn't score here or just say he doesn't even attempt a shot. And I'm not saying that this is going to be Dyson Daniels job here in the, in the postseason or in this, in this series, but look at what the advantages you're playing with, right? So you have three guys in the paint. So even if we do kick this out, you're going to be playing advantages where you can tackle on closeouts or even swing, swing, which you'll see in a couple um, other clips. But just by simply entering into JV in the post creates advantages for you. Same thing. Fourth quarter here, uh, down 11, Hawkins, an, a, an entry post from the top of the key, right at him, two dribbles. Now look, once again, 10 eyes on JV, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Also, Najee has a clear cut to the back to the basket from the corner. Just kind of stood there. That's okay. Or he has a wide open corner three. Instead, JV doesn't even give it up and just simply puts it right over Chet. So most of the time, JV had scored on Chet, especially in the post. When you know this is two on one right now. JV simply gives him the shoulder. Another easy baby hook. Okay, so now we're going to get into the um, into this two-man game right here with Brandon and Trey. And this kind of st- stood out to me here on the film as well. We're going to talk a little bit about Herb Jones, right? So look at J-Dub here on the on the right block right here. Focus on him with Chet. Okay, so they're going to set this screen here. Look at J-Dub's sprint. Like, he's not even, like, shuffling. He's sprinting to take that maybe short roll away. And leaving Herb Jones wide open here in the corner. So what happens here? Brandon kind of tries to turn the corner, does a really nice job creating a good dump off to JV, who he once again finishes at the rim. But what I wanted to show you is that the Thunder are telling me they're gonna live with Herb Jones shooting corner threes. And to me, look, man, if Herb does what he's done all year, I think he's in line for a huge series because if the Thunder are going to play this far off of Herb Jones, and we know Brandon was one of the best passers, definitely the best passer on this team, one of the better passers in this league, Brandon's going to find Herb. Um, He just misses him here. Look, he's wide open. Look, JV's rolling hard, so Chet's going to go here. We're sticking here with Dyson. Herb's going to be shooting wide open threes. The one thing that with Herb Jones that I don't want to happen is I don't want him to settle. Of course, I want him to shoot threes because look at this closeout. Just say Brandon were to skip this to Herb. That is a extremely long closeout for J-Dub. So if he's going to close out, that's a simple show and go. And then you can attack the rim, attack Chet, or either dump it off to JV who's going to roll. But instead, Brandon still does a nice shot breaking him down and it ends up in a JV uh, layup. Okay, so one thing I did like about this film was Brandon Ingram's. I actually thought Brandon, like, the box score is weird. Um, I didn't think Brandon played that bad. Uh, he just only took nine shots. He's like, he ain't taking nine shots on playoff games. So, I, you know, his productivity doesn't go up. But one thing I did like about Brandon, he was aggressive to the rim. He got, he got some good downhill drives. Um, I don't really think anybody on this team can guard him. So, once again, two-man game. Brandon does a nice shot. They're going to chase it. So, now Brandon's got two on the ball. 
And right there, that's it, okay? And they call it a gold 10. But what I wanted to show you is if we set a solid screen here, they're going to chase Brandon. They're not going under. So Brandon attacks Chet hard. And what I wanted to show y'all is this. Say J-Dub is all the way over there, right? Just say, you know, they wall him off. You have a Herb Jones cut and a Trey Murphy drop that is wide open. Right. So even when JV doesn't score, he gets here on the short roll. They're they're converging on him. Look at these corner cuts and also slot. You can say slot drops, whatever you want to call it. They're going to be wide open, too. So JV not only does he have to worry about finishing at the rim, but if he looks opposite, once again, he's got two shooters, two 40 percent shooters wide open, um, you know, at the wing in the corner. So that that's something also the Pelicans can exploit against this Thunder, Thunder's defense. And they call the gold setting there. So, okay, the last one of the last clips I wanted to show you. So now Chet made an adjustment to where he started to front Jonas. Okay, so you see how he's fronting him? He's not deny he's denying the basketball. So they're gonna help off Dyson. And I was actually very impressed with this. Even though it's it, I think it results in a turnover, I wanted to show you the vision of it. So Najee's looking in, they're they're denying. So what does Dyson do? S very smart. Flash is high post. Okay, so we get high post. And what it's supposed to be is as he catches, he's got him. That that should be two points. It should be a simple dump off here. Right about right there. JV's got him right there. That should be two points. Instead, Dyson kind of just throws it. It was a weird, I don't know. Chet's kind of holding. JV's got to seal him better. But the idea is there. So if Chet's going to play behind him, OKC's going OKC to have to send two. If Chet is going to front him, like you're seeing now, you can send opposite corner to flash high post, and this is what we call a high low. So high to low. To be honest with you, Dyson should just throw it right there, and it should be two points. So that's something I guarantee the coaching staff saw on film as well. And also, I think they're gonna, you're going to see a lot of these types of coverages uh, change it up on JV because I think he's a main, he should be a main focal point against the Thunder. Now, we can't just all talk about all offense. Defensively, Chet Holmgren has the advantage with the Thunder. And I'm going to show you a couple clips here what I didn't like from JV. All right, Chet, he's an incredible player. He's going to be a really, really good player for a long time. He is a rookie. He's a seven-footer with incredible skill, touch, et cetera. Like, he, he's got it all. Um, the one thing I would say that I would I would live with is his three-point shooting, 37%. You would say, eh, like in today's game today, you said about five or six years ago, 37%. You're like, yeah, he's, he's elite. Joe Missoula really opened up my eyes when he uh, talked about his scouting report. And shout out to Five who who um, who showed it to me. But Joe Missoula, now you're you're only elite when you're forty percent and above. Anything anything below that, I'm gonna let you have. I'm gonna let you shoot. You're gonna have to make it. So Chet this year on four point three attempts, shot thirty seven percent from deep. You can't do this, right? So JV, okay, thirty seven percent three point shooter. What is what? Chet's just going to show and JV almost falls and then you're dead. So once again, J this isn't JV's game, man. It's just not, uh, I, you know, maybe it's Larry's Brandon's, whoever this ain't JV's game. It's a bad closeout. It's a simple pump fake and it's a layup. Okay. And you're going to see that a couple more times in this film. Um, and then we got JV playing through double teams again. Uh, something that the Pelicans can definitely do to exploit that, but I want to stay back on defense. So, J Dub, Chet, two man. They're in drop. Najee tries to fight over. Najee stays. JV stays. Okay. We instead of sprinting out at him, JV kind of closes short and then explodes up. That's a decent contest. I'll live with that. If JV can do that and we clear the boards. The Pelicans have a chance here. But if JV's going to sprint out there, Chet's, Chet's a high IQ kid too. He's just going to show it one dribble and no one's stopping him. But if you make him think, close out short, then contest late, get out there, maybe ruin his rhythm. And this is the, this is the most important thing. CJ McCollum right here. Pushing him out, clearing the board, and going. That is right there. This is the key to me with Chet Holmgren. Look, SGA's top five guy in the league he, he's gonna get his like it is what it is it's the chet holmgrens the the lou dorts the you know j-dubs and go off like chet's still gonna get his points but i'm saying it's like you can't have chet holmgren dropping 20 on you 25 like 
that's a death sentence. Like you can't have Lou Dort dropping 16. I think uh, Giddy dropped like 25 the other time. You can't do that. You're just going to lose. But if you live with these type of results and make Chet beat you from deep, I think you got a chance. And really good boxing out going the other way. Once again, I want to show you a clip against Larry Nance because Larry's going to play. I don't like the matchup with Larry and Chet because this is what I said, right? Okay. Ask yourself this question. Can Chet guard JV? The answer is no. Can JV guard Chet? The answer is no. Can Chet guard Larry? The answer is yes. Can Larry guard Chet? The answer is no. I I just, it's a bad matchup for him. It's not fair. He can take him off the dribble. He can post. He can take him in space. Like, I I worry about that matchup. Now, Larry's going to have to play. uh, And there's going to be a lot of opportunities for Larry to play. I don't like the matchup of Larry and Chet. Because I'd rather have, to be honest with you, if this is the lineup, I'd rather have Brandon Ingram guard Chet, bother him with some length and quickness, and then have Larry guard Giddy. But if, you, if this ain't gonna like this, just isn't gonna work. I, I, it's not gonna work. So I don't want to see that matchup when Larry's on the floor. Um, once again, you're gonna see this formation a lot from the Thunder. They call it, I don't. You can call it whatever you want. It's just a simple high center ball screen, right? You'll have a dunker and you'll have two corners. And basically, it's J Dub and SGA's read, right? If they want, to, they think they have the defender beat, they're gonna go downhill. If not, they're gonna make JV commit, and then they're gonna pop out Chet. They'll pat, pop out, you know, J Dub when he's in there, like, and SGA's handling it. They'll pop out shooters, all that different kind of stuff. Sorry, I might have got a little excited there. Uh, rewinded it a bit. All right, so roll this. J Dub simply sees he's got two on the ball. Goes to Chet, and once again. Jonas, Jonas, you just got to close out short. You got to close out short because this is what you, this is, this is where they kill you. If Chet shoots it and makes it, man, he, he, he makes it. You tip your cap. That's it. But this right here is too easy, man. They're back breaking plays. So you got to close out short, make them shoot it. Cause you can't allow that. Cause that's where Chet kills you. And now same formation. Now Chet's going to run out. JV's now in drop. One simple little hezzy, gone. Once again, JV's got to be more over here. It's going to be more over here. We have to be okay with this. You're going to have to live with that. Also, if you do get beat, you have Dyson, then you can X out. But you can't give this lane. You can't give this. You drive a fucking truck through this. And then Jordan Hawkins, your weak side help. That can't happen. JV's got to be a little bit lower to stop this. If they throw it over the top, you got to X out. CJ's got to be way bigger, better of a stunt too. CJ doesn't, doesn't move. Like that's, like I, I get it. Like you're showing it, but that's <laughs> this does nothing. I don't know what that is. Like CJ, CJ needs to step up at least to see if JV's beat. He's got to step up and then recover. But once again, that that set right there, they're gonna run a lot, guys. So I want you to understand. It's a it's it's a guard up top, a shooter right here. You're gonna have a dunker and two corners. That's what you're going to have to let. You're going to see that over and over and over again. The Pelicans have to make adjustments or live with certain people shooting. Because this right here, J Dub and um, J Dub and SJ killed you. So, look, I like the matchup. Uh, I wish Zion was healthy. I'm really glad they made the playoffs. I love just playoff basketball. And I'm interested to see the adjustments that are made, right? Um, I think the Pelicans have a lot of film to go off of. I'm glad that. You know, I'm not glad that Zion's hurt, but I'm glad, glad that there was a game this year when Zion didn't play and they saw what it looked like. And there are certain advantages, as I showed you in that film review, that the Pelicans have, and there's a lot of advantages that the Thunder have. SGA is going to get his, but with SGA, you can throw Dyson, you can throw Herb at him, maybe even sometimes Najee, maybe even sometimes Jose. Um, and all around, like you got guys that can guard Giddy. Like J Dubs doesn't get his, but you still have guys that can guard him. The guy is Chet, because you have nobody that can guard him, maybe besides Brandon. But if you're smart about it, take advantages of what he's not great at, then you give yourself a chance to win. So, look, I'm really excited. Um, love to hear y'all's thoughts on on who should match up, who should start. Uh, obviously, we'll be live tomorrow, Sunday night after the game, then live again Wednesday night. So appreciate everyone's pulled up. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see y'all tomorrow night.